In this episode we want to have a closer look at the first civil zeppelin after the first world war, the LZ-120. First of all, there used to be an earlier LZ-120 which was a war zeppelin and belonged to the German army. It had the internal manufacturer number LZ-90 and set the record for the longest zeppelin mission during the war with 101 hours. So although the name used to be the same, we shouldn't confuse the two. So right after the war ended, the Zeppelin company switched to civil production and started planning a new generation of civil airships. For them it was clear that they would start with passenger flights within Germany and Europe as soon as possible. For that, the first airline in the world, DELAC, which already operated successfully before the war, was reactivated and ordered two new Zeppelins. In February 1919, the Zeppelin factory decided to call the new Zeppelin LZ-120 because of its 20,000 cubic meter gas volume. The sister ship was slightly longer and called LZ-121. For the war-proven design office, the development of this new generation only took two months and the ship was already finished in August 1919. This new generation was quite remarkable. It was the shortest airship the Zeppelin company ever produced, until then and also later. Because of its small size they didn't need too much material and they also still had lots of leftover material from the war Zeppelins L-73 and L-74, which were in production when the war ended. The small size was possible because the ship was only designed for a range of 1700 km, which was enough for its purpose. Less gas volume means it can take less fuel and hence the range is also less. Because the ship was so much smaller it only had four engines. One center car in the back with two engines which powered a large propeller with 5.2 meter diameter. And by the way, the Zeppelin company used the leftover center car of war Zeppelins for this. And one engine car on each side with one engine each and a 3.2 meter propeller. These also had a gearbox which could reverse the rotation of the propeller. These four engines were all the same. The latest state-of-the-art Maybach high-altitude engine MB4A. That was a large capacity straight six-cylinder engine with high compression. Too high for sea level, so it had to be limited at lower altitudes. Because the engine was only designed for 240 horsepower. At sea level this engine had more than 300. So the LZ-120, the smallest Zeppelin ever, had four of these engines and it's no surprise that its top speed reached 132.5 km per hour, a record that was only breached by the Airlander 10 in 2016, so 97 years later. But the good top speed did not only come from the fact that the LZ-120 was overpowered, it also used a full teardrop shape for the first time. During the war, Zeppelins had a cylindrical part in the center which was easier to produce but also the maximum the factory could do in their largest hangar. The LZ-120 shape was developed and optimized in the wind tunnel in Göttingen with a 1250 model by a certain Zeppelin employee, Paul Geray, who later, after the Versailles Treaty, became famous for its groundbreaking car aerodynamics. In fact, the aerodynamics was so good that they could remove one engine to increase the payload and still got pretty good cruising speed. The new airship had a diameter to length ratio of only 6.5, compared to the 9.5 of war zeppelins. LZ-120 had the cabin attached to the hull for the first time, because unlike war zeppelins, there was no engine behind the cockpit anymore. And because Zeppelin engineers always wanted a layer of air between the engine cars with its ignition system and the hull with hydrogen gas cells, previous cabins always kept the gap. The hull had a 17-edged cross-section and an internal walkway starting 10 meters behind the nose and ending 10 meters before the tail. Its paint had aluminum particles to reflect the sun, which gave it a shiny appearance. The cabin was 2.5 meter wide and like a luxury train coach. It offered 20 fixed seats and 10 basket chairs for passengers. There was even a separate VIP lounge. 
and there was one passenger seat in the cockpit for double the price. Inside was a kitchen with electric cooker and fridge. A steward served passengers and there were even toilets on board. The crew consisted of 12 people. LZ120 had a large radio station powered by wind generators and an 80 meter long antenna under the ship. Zeppelins used a ballast weight in Zeppelin shape. On 20th of August 1919, LZ120 had its first test flight. A week later, it started with passenger flights between Friedrichshafen and Berlin and was officially named Bodensee. Such a flight took between 4 and 6 hours. In comparison, by train it took 24 hours. Until 5th of December 1919, so within 98 days, LZ120 did 103 passenger flights. It was always booked out and flew in every weather condition. It transported 2,379 passengers, 4,500 kg post and 30,000 kg of cargo. And LZ120 stopped 15 times in Munich on the way to Berlin. There was never any problem, just one incident happened on 2nd of November 1919. After landing in Berlin, heavy wind pushed the ship on the ground and pulled it back up. Seven people got scared and jumped off the ship. Now the ship was too light and the crew instructed the ground crew to let go. The crew was war experienced and got it under control. They were flying above the snow clouds, but the wind was too strong to fly back to Berlin. So they decided to land without ground crew. They landed in a forest west of Berlin. By the way, Zeppelin chief designer Ludwig Dürr was also on board and took over the lateral rudder control to land LZ-120 in the snowy forest. They landed safely, passengers were brought back to Berlin with buses and two days later, after the snowstorm was over, LZ-120 flew back to Berlin and continued its service. During its service time, on 8th of October 1919, LZ-120 did a demonstration flight from Berlin to Stockholm. Sweden stayed neutral in the war and was keeping friendly relationships with Germany. The arrival of the airship was very impressive and Sweden wanted a regular service. The Swedish government even provided a budget to install an airship base. Captain Lehmann was sent to Sweden in July 1920 to consult them. They agreed on installing a regular service between Friedrichshafen, Berlin and Stockholm, with two airships every two days. The split of the project should have been 50-50 between Germany and Sweden. Sweden should have ordered a new Zeppelin with 32,000 cubic meter gas volume and the Zeppelin hangar company in Berlin would have built a hangar in Stockholm for them. Germany provided the LZ-120, the large hangar in Friedrichshafen Löwenthal and a hangar in Berlin Starken. And by the way, Sweden also planned a regular service between Sweden and Gotland with Donier seaplanes. Donier was a former Zeppelin employee as well. But this new project with Sweden couldn't happen because the Inter-Allied Commission instructed Germany, at the end of 1919, that all sorts of motorized air vehicles need to stay on the ground and are confiscated. And in August 1920, while Lehmann was still consulting in Sweden, that Germany has to hand over not just all airships, even the civil ones, to the war winners, they also have to demolish or hand over all airship hangars. More on this in my other video. And so LZ-120 had to stay in its hangar and also its sister ship LZ-121, Nordstern. The Nordstern was 10 meter longer, had 22,500 cubic meter gas volume and was designed for a regular connection between Friedrichshafen, Berlin and Stockholm. With both Zeppelins not being allowed to fly, they were sitting in their hangars and waiting for the handover. In winter 1920-21, LZ-120 was extended by 10 meters to the same length as LZ-121 and the fourth engine was reinstalled. That way, the Zeppelin company stayed busy as well, which was important to keep the workforce ready for new projects. On 27th of June 1921, LZ-120 did its last flight within Germany, with Zeppelin employees on board to honor their work. At this flight, they tested collecting ballast water in Lake Constance while flying, to balance the fuel consumption. 
A few days later, on 3rd of July 1921, Hugo Egner himself, boss of the Zeppelin company, flew LZ-120 to Italy to hand it over. The crew stayed a couple of weeks to train the new Italian crew. On 9th of August 1921 was the handover flight with German and Italian crew. On 2nd of September 1921, Italy renamed the LZ-120 Bodensee to Esperia. In 1922, the Italians found leaks in some gas cells, grounded the ship and asked the German Zeppelin company for help. Organizing the repair job took some time and they repaired the cells a year later in summer 1923. In the next five years it did 116 flights. The last flight of LZ-120 happened on 28th of July 1928. Due to the Italia crash, Italy stopped their airship program. Right after its last flight, LZ-120 was demolished. The high-tech, lightweight aluminium structures were recycled in a very Italian way. They became pergolas. And that was the end of the smallest and fastest Zeppelin ever. I hope you liked this look back in history and if you did, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member for more videos like this. See you at the next one.